Welcome to More Than Numbers, a series presented by ICES where we're going to take a deeper look into how data is used to answer important healthcare questions in Ontario. Since 1992, the Ontario government has entrusted ICES with securely holding and analyzing its health administrative data to evaluate and improve Ontario's health system. Our researchers use a vast and secure array of health-related data to answer key questions to improve the health of Ontarians. In this segment, we will be learning about some of the data behind the COVID-19 response in Ontario. The virus was confirmed to have reached Canada on January 25th, 2020. And since then, Canada, similarly to many other countries around the world, has needed to respond quickly to deal with increasing numbers of COVID-19 infections in its population. Data became an essential component of the Ontario government's ability to make informed decisions and to readily meet the needs of its population during the pandemic. To learn more about this, we connected with our scientists to take an in-depth look at how data was part of the journey over the last year. Let's meet Jeff, Leslie and Hannah, who were part of the ICES COVID research team. Jeff, the province of Ontario has had to respond quickly to rising COVID-19 cases across the province. Many of us have even had first-hand experience taking a COVID test and trying to understand where to get tested and testing eligibility. But what happens after one of us takes a COVID-19 test? Where does that information go? Can you describe the journey of the data from a person taking a COVID test to ICES? So what happens is people can get tested in very, you know, a whole bunch of different places. So they can go to a COVID assessment center, emergency department or hospital, a nursing home, a family doctor's office or pharmacy. So all these places where people can get a COVID test, um, they have to be sent off to a lab to actually get the tested. And then we have to collect the data uh, from the labs. Um, in addition, if someone tests positive for COVID, um, public health will contact that person and collect additional data, uh, which is part of a process called case management and contact tracing. And so we also bring that data into ICS as well. And we put it all together to see who's been tested and who's tested positive for COVID. We know that data has been a vital component in helping governments, healthcare organizations, and other sectors respond to the COVID-19 pandemic. Jeff just explained to us where these data come from, but for them to be useful, they need to be processed and analyzed to make them valuable for understanding the impact of COVID-19 on Ontarians. We know that ICS played a role in processing this information for analysis. Hannah, can you walk us through how did ICS receive these data and what happened to the data when they arrived at ICES? ICS already um, has access to other types of laboratory tests um, recorded in the Ontario Laboratory Information System. Um, so there was already an existing partnership with the data provider. Um, but unlike the data feeds for uh, the other laboratory um, tests, which we receive every three months, um, we received the data feed with COVID test results uh, daily. And obviously it was important to receive um, data daily because the pandemic was evolving and we needed um, timely data to support the response and policy making. However, um, a lot of these, most of the COVID-19 test results in OLS is pretty much text-based and there's a lot of variability in how um, laboratories enter this information. And we learned that there could be like various ways um, how COVID uh, tests are recorded. Um, so luckily we have uh, a colleague, uh, Branson Chen, who's a senior health information analyst with our data quality and information team. Um, he had the skills and expertise to data and text mine and um, develop a code to extract keywords and phrases from these free texts to determine whether COVID-19 test was positive or negative for the virus. Um, and then along with the IFIS uh, CCM uh, data set, uh, we were able to kind of combine it with OLIST at the individual level to uh, describe the COVID cases um, in Ontario. Um, then the data goes to the analytical team who analyzes the data to uh, describe who's getting tested, who's testing positive, what region they're coming from, and finally the interpretation. Um, what do these numbers mean and what actions can be done to address the uh, issues the data uncovered? You mentioned all of these databases, OLIS and IFSCCM, in which the data were being captured. But with all of this data on individual cases being captured in separate databases, how did you bring all of that information together to understand who was tested for COVID-19 and who tested positive? So at ICS, um, all of our work with data is dependent on linking records at the individual level uh, using a unique identifier, which is assigned using um, an OHIP health card number. Uh, so therefore, we are able to use both o um, OLIS and IFIS CCM to describe who is being tested and positive because these data sets came with a health card number. 
or if it didn't, um, additional personal um, identifying information like the first and last name, sex, and date of birth um, that can be used to assign a unique identifier using more sophisticated linkage methods. Lastly, it is important to uh, point out that not only are we able to identify those who are being tested, uh, but also populations who are not getting tested enough. Um, ICS has information on every resident with an Ontario health card, and we can see who has never received the COVID-19 test. Not only were we identifying who was getting tested, but also regions and populations where we were getting low testing rates. We also know that COVID-19 has disproportionately affected populations such as racialized communities, migrant workers, and healthcare workers. Leslie and Jeff, how did the research team leverage ICS's data linking abilities and experiences to understand testing and positivity for different populations? ICS houses an array of Ontario's health-related data. And even before the pandemic, ICS was able to leverage the linkage between databases using a unique identifier. Over the years, ICS has developed a number of validated algorithms to identify specific chronic disease population, which uses a variety of the health administrative databases. And these populations that have been derived at ICS have become especially valuable when seeking to identify specific groups most at risk for COVID-19. So the linking of the data across different sectors was essential to understanding the full picture of the pandemic and identify which priority or vulnerable groups were getting tested and testing positive for COVID-19. So we used our experience uh, studying nursing home residents uh, to monitor outbreaks in nursing homes. So we can see how many people were getting tested for COVID and how many tested positive for COVID in each home. The data quality and information management team used a technique called address matching, uh, using the addresses uh, recorded in the OLIS and IFIS CCM databases to compare with a publicly available list so that we can identify COVID cases and percent positivity um, in retirement homes. Then we uh, use data from the Immigration, uh, Refugee and Citizenship Canada database to look uh, to see how immigrants and refugees were impacted by COVID-19. And then lastly, uh, we also looked at, um, we tried to identify hotspots by looking at postal codes of people testing positive uh, for COVID to see which areas of the province had higher rates of COVID. People and organizations everywhere have had to adapt their lives and operations during this pandemic. COVID-19 required rapid data turnover to provide real-time numbers for a timely response. And as such, ICES has had to adapt its processes to ensure effective and rapid reporting to the Ministry of Health and the COVID-19 command table. How did you have to change operationally to meet these demands? So uh, given the urgency to provide uh, real-time numbers that were relevant, uh, we literally had to assemble a team of members from all departments across ICES uh, to be able to turn around uh, data requests uh, really quickly. Uh, for example, there were data requests to look at testing at various congregate settings or at defined neighborhoods and regions, um, which current ICS data sources uh, are not able to readily identify. Uh, so we had to acquire new data such as, such as address lists for these facilities or geographical boundaries for certain neighborhoods, uh, which would then be linked at the individual level uh, with OLIS or IFIS CCM data. And acquisition of any new data requires um, support from our strategic partnerships group, um, but also the privacy and legal office who reviews the terms and conditions of the data uh, to make sure we are using the data and disseminating results properly. We also assembled a committee of ICS scientists who uh, dedicated hours um, each week to help interpret um, the results from the frequent reports and um, advise on additional investigations that would be relevant to the command table. We've talked about how you've helped the ministry and the COVID-19 command table, but across the province, other organizations and services have had to respond to the pandemic to help support their communities. Through the Applied Health, Health Research Question Program, ICS scientists have been able to leverage these data to support other organizations to do better delivery and decision-making. What communities and organizations have used these data through ICES support? So the Ministry of Health provides funding to support the provision of data to communities and health system partners who wouldn't otherwise have access to this level of data or breadth of data. And this is to enable them to better understand and serve their communities. As a research provider within the Applied Health Research Question or ARC portfolio, ICES has worked with many knowledge users in Ontario 
to provide summary reports of how COVID-19 has impacted both the community and healthcare delivery systems. We have many ongoing COVID-19 related ARCs. A major COVID related project has been with Public Health Ontario and data from this project informs both the ICES COVID-19 dashboard as well as feeds into the Ontario COVID command table. The Ministry of Children, Community and Social Service has been able to leverage data uh, from ICES to better understand testing and positivity in vulnerable populations. So for example, identifying groups along the Ontario Marginalization Index. We are also working with the nonprofit organization RENA in identifying the effects of COVID-19 on individuals with developmental disabilities. At ICES, we also have the Indigenous Health Portfolio and this portfolio has several ongoing projects with our Indigenous community partners to inform key decision makers on the impact of COVID-19 within their communities. And we have many continuing discussions going on with the ministry to determine how best we can improve access to COVID-19 testing and positivity data uh, for our health system partners through the ARC portfolio. Many of these processes and systems that we're speaking about today related to data capture did not exist before the pandemic and have become vital sources of information for the COVID-19 response. Data collection for COVID-19 was developed in real time as the pandemic was beginning and is continuing to evolve. What are some of the challenges that you have experienced working with the COVID-19 data because of this? So the biggest challenge was that every laboratory has a different information system and how they're reporting their information into OLIS uh, was a little bit different. And so it wasn't straightforward working with OLIS. It was quite a messy database where we had to use the text mining that I mentioned earlier. Um, and, and we had to consult with various people to understand the data, to clean the data uh, and to make it uh, you know, into a usable form. Um, so that was a lot of work getting the OLIS data ready. And then we also realized that the OLIS data may not be complete. Um, there was information um, that, you know, important information that's not captured by the OLIS database. So then we had to use the IFIS CCM database to, you know, add additional data and additional uh, information. And so it required us working with a lot of our partners in the Ministry of Health, Public Health Ontario, and Ontario Health to bring together all these data sets and understand what all the information um, you know, is in these data sets. Um, and in addition, um, you know, now with new testing methods, we also have to incorporate these uh, data into um, our workflows. So understanding things like uh, the point of care testing um, and tests being done in pharmacies, all of these things uh, that were being brought in you know, partway through the pandemic, uh, we had to deal with as well. Um, other issues are that, you know, when we're trying to identify people with chronic health conditions, we're using our administrative databases, which are not perfect. Um, you know, they're, you know, they're close, um, but they, you know, might capture people who may or may not necessarily have the disease that we're looking for, but they're the best things that we have. So we now understand a lot about the data itself and the people that you've been working with. So what happens once you've analyzed these data and have findings? How do you share these findings and how has it supported policymakers and healthcare providers to gain COVID-19 testing services and awareness? I think we've made a lot of great strides in providing data for the COVID response in a very short period of time. We've been providing weekly reports to the public health units on neighborhood level testing and COVID positivity to help them in their response and for them to inform uh, people who live in their uh, areas about where the hotspots are uh, in, their air, in their units. We also have the COVID dashboard uh, that, uh, that we've been uh, putting out on our website, which shows a lot of the graphs uh, and maps of where, you know, the, the trends over time of COVID percent positivity, uh, areas in the province where there are the hotspots, uh, as well as different things like you know, in specific age groups where there's a higher levels of COVID uh, compared to other age groups. Uh, we also helped uh, provide information to the Retirement Home Regulatory Authority so that they could know how many cases there were in each of the retirement homes. There continues to be lots on the horizon for the COVID-19 pandemic response. What do you see as future opportunities for using data to continue to address the COVID-19 response in Ontario? And how do you think ICES can play a role? 
So what's really exciting in the coming months is that we're going to be helping with the vaccine rollout. We're going to be doing a number of studies uh, to look at vaccine coverage, vaccine safety, and vaccine effectiveness. So for vaccine coverage, basically what we're doing is to look at um, you know, who's getting vaccinated, where are they getting vaccinated, and you know, what proportion of the population are getting vaccinated. And to inform this rollout, uh, we're providing data to the ministry so we can know which areas of the province are more likely to have had COVID, where there's higher risk of getting COVID, so that we can prioritize those areas, as well as the age groups that are at higher risk of having a severe outcomes related to COVID. In terms of vaccine safety, I think it's really important so that we can maintain the confidence in the vaccines. If there are any important side effects that we couldn't detect in the clinical trials, we'll be able to find them when we um, do these studies in the broader population. And lastly, it's important for us to measure vaccine effectiveness to make sure it's as effective as they're showing in the clinical trials, you know, when we see that when we are uh, bringing this out in the broader population. So I think all of these things are important for the evaluation and the role of, of the vaccination program. So I actually think ICS is well positioned to continue to address the COVID-19 response in Ontario. Given the subject matter expertise that we have and also the increasing number of data sets that are arriving related to COVID. But I think ICS has an opportunity now to really reach out and identify further health organizations that may not know uh, about the opportunity to access the data that we have. And I think this will really help with broadening um, our opportunity to help others in their own response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Behind the scenes of the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been a tremendous response from all sectors, and many of these sectors have used data to monitor and inform their approaches to protect and care for citizens and inform future planning. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues, and even as it ends, the opportunities for communities to make informed decisions to help combat COVID-19 and inform their future responses to the pandemic will continue to rely on these data. Behind all of the headlines and statistics, it's important to remember that it's more than numbers.